pregame.com. Tuesday, baseball action. We've got St. Louis traveling to Milwaukee. Scott, we've got last year's world champions against the team that ran away and hid with this division last mm -hmm. year, Milwaukee. But the Brewers aren't the same team this year, that's for sure. In St. Louis, every time you think they're making a move, then you have what happened this weekend. They got swept mm -hmm. by Cincinnati, which was a, a key you know, series for the Central Division. What do you think of these two teams? Yeah, I mean, you got key series galore. These two teams hooking up. I think the Brewers play the Reds after this, if memory uh, serves me well. But the bottom line is, is that you talked about what happened this weekend. St. Louis led in games one and game three. They also lost game two in extra innings. You know, and in the bottom plot, yeah, they hit well. They weren't bad. They weren't shut down, but they did not hit when guys were in position to score runs. And that was the difference in that series. So now they've got to suck it up and they've got to, I think, you know, you got to start looking about taking maybe two or three here from Milwaukee is what they've got to be focused on doing. They got Lance Berkman back over the weekend, of course, had to shake off some rust, and I think he only batted once or twice in his first game back, uh, but he's going to start to make a difference as everybody gets used to each other. You know, Beltran, Berkman, they've got to get to know each other well. But the bottom line is, for me, as I look at these two games, the first thing I'm going to throw at you is Joe Kelly, who has this nice ERA of, of 270 over his last six starts, but he's got kind of a high whip, a buck 44. Now, he doesn't give up a lot of hits, and that's been his saving grace because he's walked nine guys in his last 12 innings pitched. Only seven hits allowed at the same time, so it's kept him from, having, from putting up a lot of, giving up a lot of runs. Uh, but if he continues to do that, eventually he's going to find a game where he gets tagged. Uh, the bottom line is in this one, though, is that he still continues to get the important outs. He's not allowing teams to get those clutch base hits after walking a player or two. Well, this is going to be my free pick, and uh, I actually like St. Louis and Kelly. And, you know, you alluded to, you know, his ERA is good. I mean, he's been a model of consistency the last four starts. Six innings, all four starts, sure. like clockwork. You send a robot mm -hmm. out there, and he's given up three, two, two, and zero mm -hmm. runs. The last game he gave up zero runs to Miami. Now, we know Miami can really struggle to sure. get runs, so I'm not going to make too much of an emphasis. But just like we do in any sport, you know, we talk about it in football, we talk about it in basketball, and I think in baseball it's even bigger because you're dealing with a money line. We talk about value and perception. Right. And I think based off of the weekend, people are going to look and say, okay, the f then first place Pirates went into Milwaukee and lost two out of three. So Milwaukee, people are going to be a little bit higher on Milwaukee right now, and then they're going to look at St. Louis and see that they got swept and the stock's going to fall on them. But let's look at it. As you said, you already broke down the Cincinnati game. St. Mm -hmm. Louis was in every one of those ball games. Right. It just came down to the clutch hit here or there mm -hmm. in the extra inning game. But Milwaukee, let's not get too excited about them beating the Pirates. And I know I've been high on my Pittsburgh Pirates mm -hmm. this year, but I actually tweeted it all weekend. When Pittsburgh goes to Milwaukee, it's been an absolute house of horrors for the Pirates. They're now, after losing these two out of three, they're 18-6 and six in Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. So let's not, you know, say that right. Milwaukee's back off, the, oh, they're one, not. Se yeah. off that one series. They can and, be competitive, but they're not back. <laughs> and I know they're on this little run, they're 8-4 and four, the last mm -hmm. 12 or whatever, and it's because they, opposite of what the Cardinals did over the weekend, they've been hitting with runners in scoring position, but they've got a guy who... You know, I, he just finds the sweet spot on every bat he faces <laughs> lately, and that's, of course, Wolf, who's going to be going to this game for Milwaukee, bat at home this year. Looking at his team, you know, the last 17 times he's towed the rubber, they're 5-12. and 12. And his last four games, and I broke it down even further, how about an 8.33 ERA, a buck 54 whip? Let me say that again. An 8.33 ERA in four starts, a buck 54 whip. He's given up seven home runs in his last 22 and two-thirds innings pitched. So in his last four starts, you're talking about a guy that's given up nearly three home runs per nine innings pitched. I think he might be just what the doctor ordered for the Cardinals. I like the over here. I know you're leading to the Cardinals. I don't disagree with you there, but I like the over also. I can't disagree with you, but I, I like St. Louis is, is the stronger play there. And to make that number uh, sound even more uh, bad for Wolf, that's, he gave up 21 runs in four starts. Yeah. 21 runs, that's like a half a month for the San Francisco Giants. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. You know, so, I mean, this is... Or one and a third innings for Tim Lincecum. Cup. No, <laughs> <laughs> hey, he actually pitched a good game in his last one, but, but he still didn't get the win, poor Timmy. Yeah. But uh, 
I got to go with St. Louis here. And even though Milwaukee, we all know how great of a year they had last year. And they've had a couple good right. years in a row. But last year was off the charts, and they just never lost at home. Sure. St. Louis is one team. As I alluded to earlier, Pittsburgh has come into Milwaukee and always has problems. Mm -hmm. St. Louis has always held their own coming to Milwaukee. As good as Milwaukee's been the last few years, St. Louis is actually 11-10 to three years in games in mm -hmm. Milwaukee. So for the road team to come in and be over 500 when Milwaukee was so dominant mm -hmm. at home just tells you how you know how good St. Louis actually yeah. has played here. Yeah, I, I think the Cardinals, they got to be thinking, take two, take the two games in Milwaukee. They're definitely not pushing the panic button because all they have to do is rewind it last year and see how far <laughs> out, of the, out of the running they were in, in mid-August, late August or whatever and came back to win the World Series. But what they do need to do is have like a guy like Wayne Wright start to step up a little bit because you know, I, I, I posted a free a play on uh, pregame the other day. It was the game the Cardinals lost on extra innings. Mm -hmm. I had the St. Louis Cardinals in that game and had talked about Kyle Loesch is the mm -hmm. ace of this staff right now. Rightly so. I mean, he's kicking butt. It's, not, it's no joke. But they need a guy like Wayne Wright to step up for this team to get back where they want to be. Absolutely. And remember, this team's still in the hunt, and they haven't had Chris Carpenter. Exactly. You know, yeah. so uh, we're going to go ahead. We're going to make St. Louis our play here, take St. Louis. I'm looking at this line. I expect them to come out as a small dog here. Even if it switches over and they end up a small favorite, I like St. Louis. I think the value is with them. They're the better team. Take St. Louis on Tuesday night. He's Scott Spritzer. I'm Marco D'Angelo. We're going to be right back. We're going to Wednesday action. We're going to look at San Francisco at suddenly the red-hot Atlanta Braves.